Like I said when we opened the show, temperatures are dropping around Alabama, but that only means that things are heating up for high school fall athletic teams. Let's check in on some of the hottest action from around the state last week in Holtzford's highlights. We open this week's AHSAA football highlights by checking in on one of the AHSAA's newest members, Tuscaloosa Academy, battling Seligent in a key Class 2A Region 5 game in West Alabama. The Knights got a big night from their quarterback receiving combination of Preston Lancaster and Luke Kilgore. Lancaster passed for 253 yards and three touchdowns, all three to Kilgore, who closed out the night with seven catches for 193 yards. Running back Sharabia Jones added 14 carries for 147 yards as Tuscaloosa Academy won a close one 23-20, improving to 6-2 on the season and clinching the number two seed for the upcoming Class 2A state playoffs in the process. We head east to Calhoun County where we pick up another exciting battle in Class 5A Region 6 between Alexandria and Southside Gadsden. Antonio Ross of the Valley Cubs starts off in style, scoring the first of his five touchdowns on the night. Ross would finish with 291 yards rushing. Later in the second half, quarterback TK Downey finds Ty Barker open for this touchdown pass, giving Alexandria a 35-27 lead. Despite a strong comeback effort by the Panthers, the Cubs would win this one 54-47 scoring the final TD when Downey fakes the handoff and runs 62 yards for the clinching score. Alexandria improved to 4-4 four four on the season and 4-2 and in region play. The Stanhope Elmore Mustangs have struggled at times this season, but in this Class 6A Region 2 game with powerful Pike Road, it all came together in a big way as the boys from Millbrook win 14-13. The Patriots in Class 6A for the first time this season after going undefeated last year to win the Class 5A state title saw Stanhope at its best. We also see the Mustangs cash in on a little trickery when Jacob Bryant throws a pass to Jackson Thomas, who then laterals it to Tevin Landrum on the hook and ladder play for an early touchdown and 7-0 lead. Later in the first half, Bryant fires another strike to Thomas, who races to the end zone for a 14-0 lead. Pike Road battled back in the second half, but the Mustangs defense held on for a 13-14 win to tighten the playoff race in Region 2, heading into this week's final round of region games. Auburn needed a win to move closer to the Class 7A Region 2 title. Central Phoenix City also needed a win to claim the same prize. When the dust settled, the Red Devils posted a 38-17 victory to take the upper hand moving into the last two weeks of the regular season. We check in with Central already leading 7-0 in the first half when Romeo Green takes the handoff and runs away from defenders for a 40-yard touchdown. Red Devils quarterback Jalen Epps follows up with this pass to Carmelo English in the end zone for another central score, extending the lead to 21-0. Auburn gets on the board with a field goal, making it 21-3, but Central responds with a 50-yard run by Epps to extend the lead in the fourth period. Defensive back Q Billingsley then seals the Red Devils' win with a fourth quarter pick six interception return. Heading to Jefferson County, we look in on Class 7A Region 3 game between Hewitt Trustful and Host Spain Park. The Huskies strike first in the first quarter with quarterback Peyton Floyd connecting with Brett Mosley, who makes a diving catch across the middle for the TD and the 7-0 lead. Floyd would finish with 216 yards passing and three passing touchdowns. He would also add 60 yards rushing and two scores on the ground. In the second quarter now, Hewitt hurries to the line and runs a quick pass play and Floyd finds a wide open Decarius Barnes who completes the 60 yard catch for the score. Floyd adds two more rushing touchdowns in the first half as Hewitt built a 28-0 lead on the way to a 35-10 playoff clinching win. The Huskies improved to 6-3 on the year. Let's move on now to the AHSAA Area Volleyball Tournaments where more than 50 were live streamed over the NFHS Network by member schools, a new NFHS Network record for Alabama. We pick up St. Luke's Episcopal taking on Mobile Christian in Class 3A Area 1 Championship match 
with outside hitter Haley Patterson leading the way for the winning Wildcats with 13 kills and five digs in the finals as St. Luke's advances to the South Super Regional as a number one seed with a 3-0 win. The Leopards also advance to the Super Regional, which gets underway for Class 3A Thursday morning at the Crampton Bowl Multiplex in Montgomery. Winfield takes on strong Carbon Hill in this Class 3A area tourney final and pulls out a 3-2 win. Thanks in big part to the play and leadership of seniors Tinsley Franks, Anna Lynn, and Ariana McCollum. And both teams clinched berths in the North Super Regional Class 3A tourney in Huntsville's Von Braun Center starting Thursday. In a rematch of last year's Class 3A Area Super Regional and State Tournament Championship matches, we check in on Montgomery Catholic vs. Trinity Presbyterian. Both teams moved up to Class 4A Area 5 and met again in the finals. The Lady Knights, led by Lennon McAnally, won this battle 3-1 to advance to the South Super Regional at the Crampton Bowl Multiplex this week. Trinity also notched a place in the South Class 4A Super Regionals. We close out our volleyball highlights with Hoover taking on Vestavia Hills in this Class 7A Area 4 Championship match last week. Hoover's Reagan James dominated on the net, finishing with 16 kills and 17 digs for the Bucks. Teammate Bella Gunster had 29 digs as Hoover won a tough 3-2 win over the Rebels, sending both teams to the Class 7A North Super Regional at the Von Braun Center in Huntsville Thursday morning. We wish all of our volleyball teams advancing to the Super Regionals good luck this week. We close out the highlights this week with big plays from last week's AHSAA TV Network WOTM TV Game of the Week, won by Sparkman over Huntsville at Milton Frank Stadium. We turn it over to our awesome broadcast team, Coach Rick Rhodes and TV legend Mickey Shaddix with all the calls. Milton Frank Stadium in Huntsville tonight, site of a key Class 7A Region 4 matchup and a 21-14 Sparkman lead at halftime turned into a second half runaway as Sparkman outscored Huntsville 34 to nothing in that second half to win going away 55 to 14. Big region win tonight for the Senators. Yeah, it really was. And of course, the thing we talked about at the at the opening, the number one scoring offense uh, in all of 7A football. And the, boy, they showed why tonight. They scored about every way that you can. Got off to a great start and showed really a lot of speed and a lot of ability to throw the football over you, under you, and of course, a lot of deep balls. Of course, you're gonna see Rogier, the good receiver, gets them started. And there really was uh, uh, a lot of this all night long, but this time, Huntsville makes the big interception. It looked like that the Panthers were gonna be in it all the way. Yeah, here you see the great layout there by Jabbar making the catch, but this was a key turnover inside the 10 yard line. It was second and goal, and uh, this was a tight game at this point, and Sparkman came up with the, uh, the fumble recovery, and then they, you know, their quarterback tonight, Josh Ward, just had an incredible game. Four touchdown passes tonight. So many weapons at his disposal, Coach. Well, I tell you what, you know, they've got a lot of speed on this team. Really good receivers. I'm very impressed with them. A big offensive line. But Huntsville is going to hang tough. And this run right here is going to get him right back in the game. And, I mean, at, at halftime, I mean, one of the things we said is what a great ball game this was. It was really a lot of fun to watch and, and to broadcast. It was really just anybody's ball game. And then here was a good return by uh, Jalen Chambers that set up Sparkman in very good field position. And, and here you see that, that dynamic passing attack. Rozier had two touchdown receptions tonight. And this young man uh, had a fantastic game for Sparkman, number 33, Cameron Watkins. Yeah, Watkins was the defensive story just in the backfield all night. And just uh, really Huntsville's undoing is they could not stop the deep ball and they could not block that young man right there. Here we see a big uh, touchdown pass late in the first half. This actually made it 21-14. It was kind of anybody's game. Huntsville came out in the second half, got the third quarter kickoff, drove down. They could not convert on that fourth down play. Then it was pretty much all Sparkman the rest of the way. Lightning strikes right here, and this game was never the same after this play. One of several deep balls right here, and, and really 
I mean, Huntsville lost just about every deep contested ball the entire night. There you see the post route to Rozier over the middle, and, and the rest of the night, Sparkman is going to have their way. And then, <laughs> an interesting note about this game, you and I talked about it during the broadcast. This young man, Sean Williams, with a pick six here, he wound up with two pick sixes in the second half. Very unusual. Uh, I'm not sure that's ever happened. I'm sure it has, <laughs> but, it, but I guarantee you, as you said, that's not going to happen one time in 10 years. And, and then this is the second, the second one. pick six by Sean Williams as uh, Williams outraces everyone to the end zone, kind of how Sparkman did as a team tonight as they outrace the Huntsville Panthers and win going away 55 to 14. We're now joined by Sparkman head coach Laron White. And uh, coach, I, I got to ask you, what what did you tell your team at halftime? Because the, the, the first half, you had a 21-14 lead. It was just absolute dominance in the second half for your team. Well, we told them, you know, I told them, you know, offensive wise, and I'm an old school coach Stallings, uh, you know, get a lead and kind of, Sit on it, but I told him, guy, we, we weren't gonna, we just gonna keep on throwing the ball, uh, keep on being explosive, and try to keep on, just, just putting them in the bind and not, not, not just sit on it. Coach, uh, obviously a very impressive performance. Uh, I know you've got a tough one in Florence next week. Uh, you know, kind of a maybe a tough question, but how far can this team go? I mean, very impressive tonight. We got a good team. I, I, I felt, I told our guys I felt really bad about the last two games against James Clemens and Bob Jones because we're good enough to beat those guys. But what, they, what happened is they had two, two great quarterbacks who had two great games against us. We got a good football team. Right? And we've been working hard all week. We've been work, working hard all season. You know, I'm proud of this team and everything. They just hung in there. We got to keep on hanging in there every week. And that'll do it for this week's edition of AHSAA TV Weekly. Send David Holtzford your highlights, always practice good sportsmanship, and be sure to tune in to our Thursday night game of the week. This week we'll be at Pike Road for their game versus Carver Montgomery. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you right back here next week with more Alabama high school sports action.